Coast Guard saved the lives of my son, myself, and my grandson. Y'all saved three generations out there. No, we tried. If they wouldn't have came, probably wouldn't be here today. I thank these guys from the bottom of my heart. They're just good people. Thanks to U.S. Coast Guard. If it wasn't for you, I can honestly say I wouldn't be here right now. Thank you. Just can't thank you guys enough. Thank you. I thank God every day for all of the Coast Guard. You know, how do you thank people for saving your life? Thank you doesn't always seem right. You know, it doesn't sound like quite enough. These are great young men and women. You see the best that our country has to offer. And they are so unassuming. Coast Guard members are humble. They're just ordinary people, but let me tell you, they do extraordinary things. For the entire Coast Guard, it was all hands on deck. That's why I joined the Coast Guard for, uh, to uh, bring home people home safe. So it feels good to save someone's life, but uh, you know, in the end, I was just doing my job. All I do is jump in and swim. I'm just glad we were there to help them. The United States Coast Guard is always ready. Ready to save lives. Ready to protect the environment and ready to defend America. Coast Guard, Coast Guard, we are taking on water. When Coast Guard members and families face challenges or new opportunities, the Coast Guard Foundation is there. We are the proud Americans that devote our resources to our homeland heroes. We need everybody to be at the top of their game and fully focused when they suit out and go on the mission. Part of the way that we can ensure that they are focused is that they know the Coast Guard Foundation has their back. I salute the Foundation and all those who support it for reaching out to those Coast Guard family members in need and for your unmatched willingness to give so fully of yourselves to care for our Coast Guard families. The Foundation is important because they do something nobody else can do. Provide resources that are not otherwise provided by law. They can do it quickly. The primary missions of the Coast Guard Foundation are support, education, and relief. Well, I got to the Coast Guard Academy in 1967. Uh, the foundation was established in 1969 to build a better quality of life for the cadets. In the late 1960s, an academy graduate named George Holtzman saw the need to provide support to maintain the academy's excellence above and beyond the Alumni Association's important investments in the school and Corps of Cadets. Captain George Holtzman reached out to his two shipmates who served together during World War II, Fairleigh Dickinson Jr. and Bud Silberman. The three of them are the founders. And then they also brought in another Coast Guard officer, Arnie Sobel. Well, in the early days of the foundation, as I remember as a cadet, it was almost an immediate impact you felt when they started getting involved with the academy. The foundation purchased land in Stonington, Connecticut to provide cadet recreation and outdoor education space. Shipmate Lodge was built on that land. The cadets could go out there, get some time away from the academy, decompress a little bit, uh, act like more like human beings. <laughs> Soon, educational endeavors were funded. Distinguished lecturers were brought in. Books and computers were purchased, and activities were paid for. Larger projects were proposed, and the Foundation's contributions to the Academy grew. Over the next 17 years, the Foundation helped fund projects like Robert Brown Park, a visitor center, the Seamanship Sailing Center, a practice facility for the crew team, and sailboats for training were added to the waterfront fleet. Focus was being placed on the academy. We had some uh, benefactors out there that were looking out for us. As federal budgets became constrained, particularly in the mid-80s, they decided that it might be time to do a little bit more. And the foundation took on the mandate in 1986 to support all of the Coast Guard and has been doing so successfully ever since. Board Chairman John Irish and fellow officers Dick Swig, Larry Hoke, Paul Richardson, and a dedicated group of volunteer board members committed to expanding the organization's mission. 
The Coast Guard Foundation now gave direct support to all Coast Guard members anywhere in the world they were stationed. We are deployed where we live. We don't have large bases. Something like a barbecue grill is not very big, not very important, unless you're an isolated station on a barrier island that doesn't have one. We provide support in areas where the budget just never gets stretched quite far enough to be able to afford those things. The shipboard personnel really had no place of their own to go and just relax, to read a book, watch television, or just be themselves. The drop-in center is a home for our young people on board the Coast Guard ships. You don't have to, the military can just fall away from you and you just be you. Just be yourself. That's just, that's the best thing about it. Fitness gear, morale gear, camping equipment, fishing gear, units have to be physically fit. That's part of the mandate to be successful in your operational mission. And over the years, the foundation has built swimming pools, playgrounds, recreational facilities, and community spaces. Projects like this are extremely important to the Coast Guard right now. We have limited funds for us to purchase things like this and the Coast Guard Foundation was able to go out, find the funds for us, and find volunteers to help us install it. Name it, whatever you might think of, is probably something that Coast Guard donors have helped us buy to support Coast Guard units. Since 1990, the Coast Guard Foundation scholarships have helped dependents of enlisted Coast Guard members go to college. One day after school, I got a phone call. And they said, hey, congrats, you've received our scholarship. You get $5,000 a year every year of college. Since its inception, four and a half million dollars has funded over a thousand scholarships. The money is making a huge difference. It helped pay for my books. It helped pay for all the stuff in my dorm room right now. Since education is a cornerstone of our support, we also provide scholarships to the spouses of our enlisted members. It's important to focus on education for spouses because there are very few single-income families anymore. The Foundation also funds professional licensing programs and college grants that support the workforce development of active duty Coast Guard members. There is no greater sacrifice uh, one makes in service to their country than giving up their lives. My dad is in the Coast Guard for 20 years until he passed away. We determined that we wanted to be the organization that would provide what we call Fallen Heroes Scholarships. We committed to pay the full costs of a college education for the children of those members killed in an operational tragedy. The Fallen Heroes Scholarship Fund was created in 2004 when Petty Officer Nathan Bruckenthal was killed in the line of duty. The scholarship covers the higher education costs for the children of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. You know, I wasn't expecting it all, but um, it's really been a really great impact on my life. I mean, it feels really good to be connected to him through something that was such a big part of his life. Mayday, 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 Coast Guard. I said, over the years that the foundation rescues the rescuers. And I think uh, that really started uh, with Hurricane Katrina. When Hurricane Katrina made landfall in 2005, our mission had to evolve and grow. In the first uh, seven to 10 days between air crews and boat crews, the Coast Guard saved over 30,000 people. And at times, uh, the people who were involved in those missions were actually losing their houses. We've got hurricanes, terrible fires, we've had flooding. We have Coast Guard members who are subject to all of that. They are the ones out doing the mission. Some of the folks were flying on duty when their homes were being flooded. They're pushing that aside while they're focused on hoisting the people they're having to deal with. They have no idea what their house looks like. In response, the Foundation created the Disaster Relief Program. We are there with immediate financial support to recover and rebuild. It meant a lot to us that our families were being taken care of. 
and it helped me to do my job uh, better knowing that they were taken care of the way that they were taken care of. There are all kinds of things that can cause a hardship on a Coast Guard family. That see agility and the adeptness of the foundation to be able to respond is one of the hallmarks that makes them such an excellent organization. I've been often asked what's the hardest thing I've ever had to do as the Commandant or as a Coast Guard officer, and it's not even a close second. It's handing the flag to a surviving spouse at Arlington Cemetery or at some other ceremony, or uh, telling a family that you're unable to save their loved ones in a search and rescue case. It's, it's devastating. When there's a loss of life in the Coast Guard family, our Fallen Heroes Fund activates right away. We are there to provide emotional and financial support to the family and to the unit of those that perish in the line of duty. The Coast Guard Foundation came into our lives when we had to make arrangements to go to California for Jake's memorial. The cost associated with responding when there's a death in a family uh, is not covered by military benefits or pay. And so the Coast Guard Foundation is able to do a whole lot more than the federal government can do. Back in 2012, uh, we lost four crew members on the Coast Guard 6535, a helicopter. And one of my dear friends was on that flight. The Coast Guard Foundation just made it possible to surround them with people that love them. So they could just focus on what they needed to do, which was grieving and remembering and honoring their son was the most powerful thing I've seen. The Coast Guard Foundation was there for me. They were behind the scenes and they took care of everything. I mean, just making arrangements with the family, um, coordinating car, picking up from, I mean, just every little thing that you don't really think about. It gave us the ability to go and honor our son with the rest of his team worry-free. And for that, I am forever thankful. In 1981, the Foundation held its first Salute to the U.S. Coast Guard event, starting a tradition that not only generates support for our programs, but also honors our heroes. On behalf of the men and the women of the Coast Guard's Atlantic Area Command, I want to welcome you to this extraordinary evening. To be recognized for what we do is kind of weird. <laughs> To be honest with you. This is one chance where we can feed them well, we can treat them nicely, and really make it a fun evening for the Coast Guard member and their family. Your generosity on their behalf certainly affords opportunities and a quality of life and service that simply would not otherwise be ours. So they're in New York City, Washington, D.C., Fort Lauderdale, Florida. New Orleans, Louisiana, Houston, Texas, San Francisco, California, Honolulu, Hawaii, Seattle, Washington, and Anchorage, Alaska. Tributes have grown to different types of events held all around the country. We find that once you have that one-on-one -on -one encounter with a Coast Guard member, you say, what more can I do for them? The challenges that the Coast Guard faces are ever-changing and evolving, and the service is committed to being ready, relevant, and responsive to the needs of the nation and its citizens. I couldn't tell you how prouder we are of this partnership with the Coast Guard Foundation. Your men and women, your leaders, the event here tonight that raises the visibility of the Coast Guard really speaks to your impact. And as long as there's a United States Coast Guard, the Coast Guard Foundation will stand shoulder to shoulder with those who serve in commitment to the values and ideals we all uphold. Thanks to all of you, the Coast Guard Foundation is also nimble and flexible in our response to the unique needs of those family members where and when they need us the most. The Foundation has become basically a connective tissue throughout the Coast Guard allows us to create a greater sense of community. It's with the support and dedication of all of you, from our very first days to this day, that makes our future possible. Well, thank you very much. Just another day at the office, right? This is what we do.